I was born in Italy and came over when I was about four. My mum's English and my dad's Italian. I was brought up in a household where a man goes out to work, a woman stays at home. Um, my father was quite um, abusive um, physically with me uh, when I was younger. He was very um, controlling, as in uh, the women should do all the housework. So my dad would say, make me a cup of coffee. And I'd be like, no, I'd get a beating. But to me, it meant I didn't have to make him a coffee. At the age of 17, I left home. When I was 19, my mum decided to leave my father. She'd had just had enough. I'd actually gone and moved with my mum. We were living in luxury apartments. I was two floors below her. Um, and my mum, I was very close with my mum. So she used to come and knock on the door and I say, come in, and I used to leave my door unlocked, and she'd come in, and if I was having a bath, she'd sit on the toilet while we chatted and had, like, mother-daughter time. And then one time, she, uh, I was having a bath, and she came in, and we was chatting, and she just looked really scared, and I said to her, what's wrong? And she said, um, I'm going to see your father tomorrow. Um, he wants to see his son, and he's got some post for me. Um, and I said to her, do you not hate Dad, like, I hate him, why are you going to go see him? And she said, I love him for who he is, not for what he does, just like you're my daughter. If you went out and did lots of crime, I'd still love you. I just wouldn't love what you'd done. And I said to her, you look scared, what's wrong? And she said, I'm scared he's going to kill her, kill me. And I said to her, don't go. If you really think he's going to do that, don't go. Um, and she said, oh, your brother will want to see his dad. And I said, well, that night I was going out clubbing, so I said, come and get me in the morning and I'll come with you and I'll make sure you're safe. Uh, the next morning, that night I went out and the next morning I woke up to the police at my door to tell me that um, my mum had been murdered by my father. So the next day I went to the police station and saw my dad and he was crying and he explained to me that he'd stabbed my mum 12 times. Turned out afterwards that he actually had schizophrenia. And my dad's somebody that never, that if he promises something he will always carry out that promise. And I said to him, if you promise me that you'll tell me everything that happened, no matter how bad it is, um, what my mum's last words were, what you actually did to her, I promise I will come and visit you all the time. I can't guarantee I'll forgive you, but I will come and visit, to, visit you. I went back home and had to try and digest this, this information. How do you deal with your mum, who is your best friend, being murdered by the person that you have hated all your life and wished he was dead? There's no rule book. Nobody teaches you this at school. Nobody shows you what you're supposed to do. So for a long time, I was very lost. I got um, into drugs. I didn't know how to deal with the situation. I didn't know what to do. I'd always lived my life with hatred, always being like, why was I born? I wish I'd never been born. And the world owed me this favor. And I knew I couldn't live like that anymore. I couldn't live with this anger that was inside me. So how do you get rid of that? How do you learn to forgive somebody for something that's so bad. So it was a very slow process. So I would visit my dad in prison on remand for the first year. And so he got done for diminished responsibility and he got sent to a mental hospital. And he then realized once he'd started taking medication that what he'd done was so wrong and how he'd lived, he'd been ill. And he explained to me if I'd known I'd been ill, I would have got help. I just didn't know that I was ill. and. I was trying to figure out what is forgiveness? Do I just do you just forgive somebody for doing such a evil act? And after a lot of soul searching, I've, I figured out myself that forgiveness to me is about me. It's not about the other person. It's saying, I understand that what's happened to me has happened. I can't change that situation. But for me to move on, I have to forgive you. And it's not allowing that other person to get away with what they've done. It's f peace for me. It's saying that I can now move on and get on with my life. And it took a long time for me to do that. And he always kept my mum alive. He told me stories about my mum every day, where I didn't have that with anyone else. And the stories I'd hear every day, um, which is something I miss the most now, is hearing stories about my mum. Um, so it, it didn't just happen overnight. It was a long progress then of just remembering what my mum said, that you love somebody for who they are and not for what they do and knowing that if it was me in that situation, my mum and dad would be there. And also the release of the stress and anger of hating someone, I didn't have that anymore. I had now had peace um, and I had a whole new relationship with my dad. Everybody hated the fact that I was 
speaking to my dad and they thought I'd forgotten my mum and that my mum's legacy, when you Googled our name, came up as murder and death and that wasn't my mum's legacy. So in 2008 I wrote an autobiography and I had a co-writer that helped me and as I was writing the book I asked her what happened to my mum's organs when she died. Because when I was 14, my mum gave me my first donor card and explained to me that when you die, you pass on your organs. So I found out through my book that my mum, because she was totally dead when the ambulance got there, that she couldn't donate her organs. In memory of my mum, I would donate my kidney to a stranger so that she could get to live on again in, some, in somebody else's life. And it would be something I could do in memory of my mum so that when you Googled her name, it came up that she saved her life rather than her life was about death and murder. And so in 2011, I donated my kidney to a stranger. I received a letter from the person and his mum. She was saying literally had a week to live and they were arranging his funeral. The Daily Mirror heard that we'd um, met each other and asked to do a story. We did a, a story for them and then they put it into the nominations for the Pride of Britain Award without me knowing. And 12,000 people voted for me to win this award. And in 2012, I won an award by John Bon Jovi for um, donate, for turning the tragedy into a positive. And now when you Google my name, it comes up like my mum saved a life rather than murder. So I managed to change her legacy. Her legacy no, is no longer about death, it's about living. And also the guy who's got his kidney, when he goes on holiday or does things, he sends me a message saying, me and your mum are doing this, me and your mum are going there. So she gets to live on again and her legacy is now changed.